Hello, uh, my name is Stefan Natchev. I go by Snatchev on the internet. And uh, I like to talk about, I renamed it, it's, I'm gonna calling it uh, Elegantly Scripting Nginx. Um, so to get started, I'd like to propose uh, an API that we're gonna build for, for instance, like an iPhone app or something, where we want to get a picture of a place. So the place could be like a city or a state or a country, something that like a picture that represents that place. Um, so it'd be something like this, like right? you could curl the web service with a, with a location and you get back a picture. If it's like Manhattan, you'd get some buildings. If it's Philadelphia, you get Rocky at the art museum. If it's been, um, Canada, it could be some lakes. So it could be you know, anything like that. So how would we go about building this kind of API? If you're like 50% of the people in this room, you could build something like this in Flask. Uh, where, so what's going on here? It's, we're using, we're using Flask. We have a uh, action on the on the root that uh, accepts a location parameter. Then we're going to go out to wiki wikitravel.org. We can assume that an article about a place might have a picture on it. So we grab the picture with some regular expression. I know I'm parsing XML with regular expressions. Bear with me. Um, so yeah, it's going to grab the first uh, image and return that. If it doesn't if it doesn't find it, it's going to return a 404. Uh, that's one option. Um, if you're like the other half of this room, you could do something remarkably similar in Sinatra, um, where like the code is almost identical, um, besides some like setup things. So, um, so yeah, here's them side by side. Basically, the same the same things going on. And um, if we step back for a minute and think about what's actually going on, is that we're doing a lot of what I'd call proxying, where the request comes in, sorry, uh, the request would come in from the client or you know, like an iPhone app or something. The web app would then make a re another request to Wikitravel. It would get the response, parse it, do some kind of filtering operation on it, and then uh, return that processed output back to the client. So it's more of like a proxy, and so I'm proposing what if we use Nginx to do that work for us? Nginx is a great web server. Uh, it's modern, it's evented. It's, um, so you know, why would you even want to consider that for this use case? Well, because it's more like this. Uh, it's really fast it's, and um, we can, um, sorry. So yeah, so I'm proposing we, we can use Nginx's powerful proxy functionality but can we do that while still retaining our dignity as software engineers? Meaning, let's not do any crazy hacks. Let's have real software that we can test and deliver and ship. So what, what would that even look like, right? Um, well, it ends up looking kind of familiar. This is um, Lapis. Uh, and if this looks familiar, it's because, well, the, the syntax might be a little different. Um, if you're familiar with CoffeeScript, uh, it might look like that. It's not, and I'll explain. So Lapis is a small, uh, feature-rich MVC framework written in Lua that runs inside of Nginx. Um, before I go any further, I'd like just to throw out some definitions. Nginx is a evented web server and proxy written in C. Open Resty is a distribution of Nginx, which has, uh, it's, has a bunch of extensions compiled into it. Um, so Lua is a language similar to JavaScript in that it's prototype based, but it is small and designed to be embedded in C programs. And MoonScript is a preprocessor, much like CoffeeScript, that will compile to Lua. And it, because Lua is kind of a small, uh, small language, MoonScript gives you a lot of the nice things that you're used to in Ruby or Python. So why would you? even learn, why would you bother with, with Lua and MoonScript? Well, as I said, it's small, easy to learn. The whole interpreter and the standard library are 182K. It's got a clean syntax, much like Python, uh, but it is prototype based like JavaScript is. Uh, it is scheme inspired in that data is code and code is data, um, and it's becoming more and more scheme-like as it evolves. It has just five data types, numbers, strings, functions, bools, and a table, a table being like a dictionary or a hash. Uh, and it's very fast, and it's meant to interoperate with C programs. 
Uh, and then adding MoonScript on top will give you things like object-oriented inheritance, mix-ins, list comprehensions, and many more. So what Lapis is is basically a tool built on top of all those things underneath that gives you a Postgres ORM, sessions, templating, uh, RESTful routing, migrations, all the good stuff, testing, and uh, but the best part, I think, is the last number 10, where you get access, because it's written in Lua that runs inside of Nginx, you get access to all of Nginx's functions in their native form, much like our last talk about using um, interpreted language to run a C code. So uh, in my benchmarking, um, I found that, that those previous two examples, uh, the, the Lapis version ran twice, twice as fast as the Sinatra or Flask version. I'm a Ruby guy, so I know I'm a little skeptical of like, this one's fast, this one's slow, but I thought that was kind of neat when I'm rooting for the winning side. Uh, so I wanted to go back to this slide a bit uh, that compares all three of them. And what kind of got me was that last line where you're like requiring Lapis Nginx HTTP, that, that actually uses Nginx as the HTTP request library instead of uh, Faraday and Ruby and HTTP, I, I'm not really too familiar with the Python one, but um, what's cool is that things like caching and um, all the things that Nginx is really good at, you have access to that and you could use it. I did implement caching in the Ruby version of this, uh, which required like um, importing active support and invalidating the cache and all these things, whereas having it, doing that in Lapis was just a few Nginx config settings that declared how I wanted uh, the cache to work. So how does it all fit in? Well, um, using Open Resty, the special version of Nginx, you get something called content by Lua file, and then you specify a Lua file, which when the request comes in on that location, it's going to run the Lua file, um, and the, whatever is returned out of that is going to be the response to the, to the client. Um, now, I was talking about MoonScript and Lua. Basically, the way you work is you have some kind of a file watcher that you're, you're editing your code in MoonScript. It comp converts it to Lua, which then Nginx runs. Um, the cool thing with a proxy, though, when you make those asynchronous HTTP requests to somewhere else, it uses Nginx internal proxy. Um, what all, all it basically does is it sets a request, uh, sets that URL variable at the bottom, and then makes a request, an internal request to the proxy endpoint, which will then cause Nginx to go out and grab whatever it was asked to grab. Um, so why should you use this? Well, it's great for setting up microservices that do some kind of proxy and transform on your date on your requests. Uh, it makes HTTP caching e easier. Um, if you want to HTTPFI, a C library, this is something that I've been toying with, uh, is using um, like OSX's core image framework to process images. And uh, you can have that loaded up right inside your Lua files and then have Nginx like make you know, REST calls to some kind of image. I don't know, this is things I was playing with. Um, Putting on production is easy be, uh, for a few different reasons. So it's really well supported on Linux. Mac, I have some pull requests uh, pending that will make it it's get set up and running a little bit easier. Um, on Heroku, there's build packs for Lapis. So you can just run the build pack and have a production environment. And um, Lua is big in the gaming world because uh, a lot of games have been written with the C engine and then scripted with Lua. But it hasn't had so much love from the web developers. and if you're trying to get some open source contributions, I think there's tons of tools and things that are ripe for um, contributing to. Um, my last slide is for questions, but I'm not doing any of those. So if you'd like, you can find me later and we can talk. Thanks.